hey guys welcome back to part two of the video where a lady was saying you can teach your child to value every dollar and a guy was disagreeing with the statement oh and he was so loud about it like you could tell that he was coming from a place of pain and trauma so for those of you that are not that might have not have seen the power one so this guy is of the opinion that if you suffered as as an as a child that when you become an adult and makes it in life you should also allow your children suffer that your children ought to go through the same you know same devastating childhood that you went to, to so that they can become better human beings but let me allow you guys to watch the response of people i love the fact that majority of the people are not agreeing to what the guy said it's just one doctor that i've seen that agreed to what he said and go and watch the part one guys go on, let's 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 take this one away how to value a dollar without making them struggle for it whatever use it vocabulary what you use. the way that bastard lashed out shows that he can't grapple with the fact that he was indoctrinated by his parents to believe that if i struggled you have to struggle too that's the only way you're going to learn the value of a dollar if i make you damn near go absolutely insane for it and beat yourself up within an inch of your life over trying to get it knowing you're never gonna get it you'll be looking at it but you'll never touch it that type of anger over what she said which was you can teach your child to value a dollar without having to make them struggle for it yes you can teach someone to value something without beating them over the head with it without making them struggle for it unnecessary struggle causes unnecessary behaviors when going to get money it causes unnecessary behaviors in relationships whether it be friendships shit relationships whether the co-workers romantic relationships familiar relationships doesn't matter that boy cannot fathom the idea to the point where he's so infuriated that she would dare have it in her head to not have a kid struggle in order to get it because he had to struggle in order to get it because he had to watch other people struggle in order to get it because he probably got beaten unnecessarily in order to get it and feels like he has a right to then make whatever kids his dumb ass decides to have if he doesn't unfortunately have them already and now they're stuck with him as a parent without the decision to you know swap because unfortunately you can't swap who you have as parents i wish i could do that i fucking couldn't so here we are you getting so upset because he's like whatever the fuck you want to define it as struggles triples trials tribulations you should you should nah, nah, nah. he he was so pissed and i i'm laughing at him i'm laughing at him i'm fucking laughing at him because people that feel like you have to struggle because they struggled is crazy that's not a reason for me to struggle that's not a reason I deserve to struggle. I don't deserve to struggle. I haven't done anything worth struggling. You chose to bring me to this earth because you chose to be irresponsible. You chose to be sexually irresponsible and have unprotected sex. Or you chose to have unprotected sex because you thought you could handle a child despite the fact that your income is barely enough to take care of your dirty ass. Why the fuck I gotta be in the mix? Now the name of the page is Being Black is Ghetto. And yes... The fuck it is. Being black is the most ghetto ass thing I've ever had to experience. And it's usually at the hands of other black people that makes it as ghetto as it is. The audacity of you to get that infuriated that someone does not want to raise their kids the way they were raised or the way you were raised. They want to have the absolute audaciousness to raise their kids to learn the value of the dollar without emotionally and physically scarring them for life in order to get that. Why is that such a problem? I refuse to watch the rest of that video because it's going to trigger the fuck out of me. And there are certain things in this world I'm not about to watch. Nobody's in control of my triggers but me. So I refuse to watch the rest of that video because whether or not he gets it in the end, I don't give a fuck and I don't have to. No, I don't know this dude. I don't have to. I don't have to figure out if he gets it. I don't care. That outburst you had right there was completely uncalled for. If you are so angry that someone refuses to torture a child 
in the process of trying to get them to understand the definition of value, of financial value, something's wrong with you. If you feel that financial stability only comes through struggle so strongly that you're willing to get absolutely infuriated by a stranger, unwilling to do that, actually willing to try to have a kinder approach to somebody who did not choose to be on this godforsaken planet, much less have to be on this godforsaken planet, put in a position to struggle when it's not necessary. Meaning they're probably bought in a world where it might not be the best world, but at least their environment for the most part is peaceful. And you're just going to intentionally disturb their peace that they haven't even been able to define yet, that they haven't even experienced yet. It's like you're giving a kid a negative balance in their account, basically, of peace and serenity and tranquility and understanding and wisdom and knowledge. You're just already putting them in the negative and having the audaciousness to think that that is going to give them value or help them understand the value of the dollar. How is anybody going to understand the value of the dollar when they're already in the negatives of said dollar? You put them in a position to now have to work 10 times harder than they ever actually needed to. At some point, the culture surrounding black people and how we handle children and black people and how they handle other black people, period, is ridiculous. I already made a video like this regarding culture. No, our color has absolutely nothing to do with our behavior, but it's the first thing people fucking see, including other people of that fucking color. They associate what they see with your behavior. That's how they do it. Not your behavior with how you look. Not first. They associate your behavior with how you look second in most cases. But they associate your behavior with how you look. They're always going to do that. They're going to make the assumption that because you look the way you look, we're going to have some issues. And it's not just because of stereotypes from non-black people that have been put on us. It's also with stereotypes that you decide to carry. That you decide to keep up. That you decide to keep throwing in people's face when it benefits you. But when it doesn't benefit you, that victim card goes fucking flying. There are situations in which you are a legitimate victim. And you need to acknowledge when you are a victim and get some help. So you no longer have to be a victim anymore. But first, obviously, try to find some peace and try to find some space. I ain't talking about that. And smart people that watch my videos know that's not what I'm talking about. The rest of you dumb people, you could kiss my ass. Because you're the exact type of people like this bitch who was yelling at this woman are talking about. I have no sympathy for a guy that yells and screams like that. I don't. Other people might be able to have the patience and maturity to do so. I'm not that mature. I might bore the fuck out of you on my videos, but I promise you, that doesn't mean I'm mature enough to not curse this dude out. I'm not mature. I'm not that mature. I'm not as mature as I seem. I promise you I'm not. We have a nasty culture surrounding struggle where we want other black people to struggle, mainly starting as a child. It's a crabs in a barrel mentality, and it starts so young and it's so bad. You want somebody to struggle just because you don't want to take the responsibility of making sure they don't. You want somebody to struggle because you're just too fucking lazy to do anything about the life that you wasted your time bringing here. You could have easily gotten a motherfucking abortion. Like, I'm telling you right the fuck now, I have no sympathy for people that know they don't want kids, bring them into this world, make them fucking struggle because in their mind, I had to struggle so you have to too. And that's just the way it works. No, bitch, it's never worked. It's never gonna work. For you to get irritated and infuriated that future generations that happen to have kids refuse to, to treat their kids the way you do means you have no, you have no, you should have no access to that child. Because for you to feel like a, your own flesh and blood or another human being that has no idea about the world should learn about it from the worst angles of it, starting with the crack of the planet's ass because that's where you're starting them at with this foolishness, is crazy to me. You don't need kids. You should not have kids. You should be spayed or fucking neutered. Pick one. Because you have to be animalistic to think making children struggle to understand the value of very important things in life makes sense. I have no sympathy. This shit triggered the fuck out of me. No sympathy. Stop 
considering having children. I don't care how small the black population in America is. I really don't. It needs to be smaller because this is how y'all treat kids. Fuck the light. I don't even give a fuck. This is how y'all treat kids that you created that causes them to be the assholes in the community we got to deal with now. This is a problem in every community, but I'm not a part of every community. I'm a part of the black community. Unfucking fortunately when it comes to shit like this. Y'all deserve to be yelled at for the way you treat kids. And then to want to sit there and tell people, I didn't raise him like that when he goes out in public or when she goes out in public and acts a fucking fool and makes somebody else suffer for the way you brought them up. Your upbringing caused them to be the way they are. The environment they have to deal with outside of your upbringing, even when your upbringing is good, is why they are the way they are. I don't care how small the black community is. The black community does not need no more fucking kids none i'm very sure that there are a lot of people in fact a lot of us myself included that we are thriving to make ends mean so that you know we won't have to live the rest of our lives struggling simply because we didn't have a head start our parents didn't give us head start in terms of you know giving us funds to start life or creating a circle where we have network of people that you know you know when Show me who you know. That kind of thing. That when somebody say, Oh, when you go to social interview, tell him so so and so sent you. You know, when you have you are among the people that their names are opening doors. If you are like me, that that don't have such network, you know, you are living the life that you are thriving so that your when you bring children on earth, that they won't have to suffer the way you suffered. You know, even the Bible said that that it's honorable for like a wise man leaves inheritance for his children's children in other words not just for your children but for your grandchildren do you know what that means that means that you have to work hard that the the way you are leaving behind should sustain your current children and also your their own children do you know what that means then somebody will not come and tell me that oh because i suffered you ought to suffer hey hey, hey. god have mercy <laughs> Let me just allow you guys to hear what some other persons have got to say. Be one of those parents that I went through it, so you got to go through it too. That's God damn right. Be? Not God me. damn right. Not me. This is what you call a bitch move. Let me explain. Ain't no way in hell you going to sit here and tell me that because maybe I had to struggle to get what the fuck I got, that my kids got to go through the same shit. No. What the fuck? I want my kids to be better than me. I want my kids to have it better growing up than I did. Just the same way as my folks wanted to have better for me when I was coming up. Because they didn't have the things they wanted to have. So they made sure that I had it. And I'm a damn sure make sure my kids have it. So anybody that wants to be a parent says, because I had to struggle, you got to struggle. Don't have fucking kids. Just don't have fucking kids. Being a parent is more than just providing. I don't think it's about whose parents make the most money or who teaches the discipline. I think it's about being present, spending time, being available for the kids to talk to, and leading by example. We're their first role models, and the values they learn from us will shape their future. So being a parent is not just a role we play, it's a relationship. Why are boomer moms defensive no matter what you tell them? Because y'all aren't telling them about themselves. See, these are the hard conversations that you have to have with your parents when you can become of age. It's that point in time when sometimes the roles begin to change a little bit. So instead of being passive aggressive and just letting them say and talk to you and walk all over you and do whatever they want to, it's time to speak up. See, what us as parents, and I say us because I have kids of my own now, we don't realize that at some point in time, we have to look and evaluate our own shit. We're not always right, and our kids are definitely going to have to do some type of healing from us in the future. So if you have a boomer mom, a boomer parent, boomer relatives or whatever that are talking to you any kind of way, it's time to open up your mouth. And if they don't listen and they continue to say things that hurt you, it's time to restrict access. Guys, believe me when I say that our parents are not ready to have the kind of conversations we ought to have. Because some parents, some of our parents, they did not do right by us at all. Some of them were so emotionally unavailable and they forget the fact that emotional abuse is as 
is as hard as physical abuse on a child. Yes, a lot of people are living life today because of the kind of trauma they had as children. Do you know what it does to a child's self-esteem when they have detached or unemotionally available parents? Do you know what it means? Do you know what it does to a child? Is it because we, we, some of us have not started sharing the kind of you know, childhood we had? Or because of some of us have, you know, through the mercy of God, we've been able to, you know, develop ourselves to the extent that we no longer live our lives based off on, you know, such trauma. We've now, you know, gone ahead to better our lives. We now do better. And and we're, some of us are now becoming better parents. Do you get some parents are not ready for that kind of conversation? But I'm I'm so glad that this generation. They are having those conversations, those hard conversations, because we need to have them. There are a lot of people that they, they have so much trauma that they're not even aware. They're not even aware that their lack of self-esteem stems from the child, traumatic childhood they had. They're not even aware. I'm telling you. And we, even, we, don't, we don't even want to talk about some fathers that were so unavailable that would just come and drop money and go. Guys, <laughs> I don't think we are ready for this conversation. That's all I can say. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section. You, you have to watch the part one if you not watch the part one. I'll try and leave the link of it in the description or in the comment section somewhere. Just look for it somewhere around this video. Don't forget to share your thoughts, guys. Like and subscribe. Bye, guys.